This method uses the current library and makes it possible to get up to 73k runecrafting XP and 30k hunter XP per hour. This is a rather complicated training method, so if you prefer it easy, then runecrafting lava runes might be a better training method for you. The idea behind the method is to catch level 2 imps and then collect books in the Arceus library and bank them by using the imp boxes, and then give the books to people in the library for runecrafting XP. The only requirement for this method is 71 hunter. However, the runecrafting XP scales based on your runecrafting level, so I would recommend getting at least 85 runecrafting. You can also catch imps quicker at a higher hunter level, and at level 80 you can lay 5 traps, so 80 plus hunter is recommended. Besides that, I would also recommend that you unlock access to fairy rings. This method is available to level 3 skillers, but it is an advantage if you are able to quickly kill level 2 imps. The only items you need are at least 100 magic boxes. You will be able to sell most of them back when you are done. Besides that, you will also be using things that are probably already in your bank, such as teleport rooms, amulet of glories, stamina potions and a weapon to kill imps with. You will be hunting imps near the chasm of fire on Sea. The quickest way there is through fairy rings. If you don't have fairy rings unlocked, you can run from the Shacian bank instead. To start off, you want to bring your imp killing weapon and an inventory of imp boxes. I'm using a dark bow, but pretty much any other weapon works as well. Drink a stamina dose before leaving the bank. When you get there, you want to put your traps on the same spots that I'm putting them at. You want to kill any imps that aren't close to your traps. There are 4 imp spawns and all of them spawn next to one of your traps. You should pick up and put down the traps in the same sequence the whole time. You can check all 5 traps in about the same time as it takes the imps to respawn and you want to check them in the same order every time. If an imp hasn't been caught when you finish your cycle, you want to kill the imp and reset the trap. If the imp teleports, it will never teleport east, so you want to be checking the west side. Sometimes you might need to give it a few seconds if it just spawned to give it a chance to enter the trap. The traps will sometimes be in a locked state where it isn't able to catch anything, so you want to reset the trap regardless if it was used or not. It's also a good idea to kill imp before replacing the trap, because otherwise the respawn timer will usually break your cycle. When you are checking your traps northwest, what you want to do is put down the trap as usual, but then pick it back up. Then right when it would activate, you want to put it down and run to the next one at the same time. If you did that correctly, you will be able to reset the three traps about 5 seconds faster than normal. If you don't do this, the imps will usually respawn a little faster than you can check your traps, which makes the imps more likely to run away, so it is quite important that you do this. Pay attention to the two imps that respawn northwest. If the imp near the orange symbol on the ground respawns first, then you want to reset the traps in order from east to north. If the other one spawns first, then you want to reset them in the reverse order. You also want to reset the traps without missing any ticks in between. The reason you want to do this is because there are some bugs in the game that makes the trap unusable when it's behind an obstacle and when the imp spawns too far away from it. If you get the opportunity to kill the imps here, you want to try to make the one that spawns near the orange symbol spawn first, as having that sequence is better than the reverse one. If you do it wrong, you will notice that quite often, two of the three traps aren't able to catch anything, and as a result of that, the imps will run away a lot more often since there aren't enough traps to catch them. When your inventory is full of imps, or almost full, teleport to the bank and repeat. With this method, you should be catching about 250-270 to imps per hour at level 99 hunter if you do it correctly. I would recommend that you don't go to the library until you have caught at least 100 imps, as it is somewhat inefficient to switch between the activities too often. If you are a level 3 skiller or can't kill imps for any other reason, I would recommend that you put 3 traps next to the respawn points and one trap on the hill to the west. The fifth trap can be placed nearby an imp that manages to get far away and it can sometimes be a good idea to move it around. You should also bring a stamina potion with you if you decide to use this strategy. 
this is slower than killing the imps but doesn't affect the experience too much because most of the time will be spent in the library anyway. When you have enough imps it's time to head to the library. You want to start by bringing an inventory of imp boxes and leaving one space for it. In order to quickly find the location of all the books you will need to use a tool which tells you the location of them. I've made one which you can find on github. Links can be found in the description. The 11 squares represent a room of bookcases in the library. The bottom left squares are on the bottom floor, the top left ones are in the middle floor and the top right ones are in the top floor of the library. Every red dot is a bookcase. The less colorful red dots are also bookcases but you will never find any books in them so there is no reason to search them. You want to start by searching the bookcases in the northeast room in clockwise order. When you find a book, click on the red dot that represents the bookcase you found the book in and then on the name of the book. The tool will mark the bookcase in cyan to remind you where it is. Make sure you clicked on the correct dot by checking that there are the same amount of bookcases on the left and right side both in game and on the tool. If you clicked on the wrong red dot, you can remove it by right clicking. At this point, the tool will mark some bookcases yellow. You only need to search the yellow bookcases from here on, as those are the only ones that can contain a book. After you find two or three books, the tool will automatically calculate the position of the rest of them. If you need to find the location of a book at any point from here on, you can hover your mouse over the book name to highlight the book. Or if you need to find the name of a book, you can hover your mouse over the cyan dot to highlight the name. The location of the books move about every 60 to 90 minutes, so when that happens, you need to find the position of them again. You can only find books if you don't already have them in your inventory. When you find a book, you want to bank copies of it with your ink boxes. You want to end up with about the same amount of every kind of book, so the first time you collect them, you want to collect 4 or 5 of each. One copy of each book should be kept in the inventory, so you need to drop some empty ink boxes to make space for them. Please note that you don't need to collect a book called Varlamor and Voy because the librarians will never ask you for that book. You also won't be able to find it if you haven't started the quest The Depths of Despair. While you are collecting books, you also want to mark the two closest books to Vilja and Professor Grackleborn on the tool. You can mark them by left clicking on the cyan dots. If there are more than two books that are closed, you can mark those as well. When you have used all your inboxes, teleport to the bank. It's recommended that you put the books in the same order as they are labeled on the tool and turn on placeholders so they don't move around. You want to fill your inventory with two copies of each book that are close to the two guys and one copy of the rest. You also want to drink a dose of stamina potion before leaving. If you have a restoration pool in your house, you don't need to drink the stamina potion if they are expensive to you. Go back to the library and start exchanging your books for runecrafting XP. Keep exchanging books until they ask for a book that you don't have in your inventory. If the book they asked for is close to them and you still have at least half an inventory of books left, then go and get the book from the bookcase and continue. If the book is not closed or if you don't have many books left, then return to the bank and repeat. If you have a restoration pool in your house and decided to not use the stamina potion, you also want to return to the bank if you reach zero run energy. When you run out of books of any kind, you want to return to the library with imp boxes and collect more. Before you leave the bank, take a print screen of your bank with the books and paste it into paint. While you run to the library, you want to do some quick maths to calculate how many of each book you need. Add up the sum, then add 54 and then divide by 15 to find the average. If you plan on training runecrafting with this method for a long time, it's not important that you get this number right, so you can also just assume that the average will be 7 or 8 most of the time, and then use excessive ink boxes on one specific book at the end. When you collect books, check how many books are in the bank and what the average was supposed to be and try to collect them so you end up with about the same amount of every book. When you run past Professor Grackleborn and Vilja, you can also exchange a book at the same time. If you did the calculations wrong and end up with too many imp boxes at the end, you can collect extra copies of the last book to use up your last imp boxes. 
When you are done, you should end up with about the same amount of every book in the bank again, so now you can repeat what you did earlier until you run out of books again. I did a test run which lasted 1 hour and 55 minutes and that gave me 139k runecrafting xp and 61k hunter xp. That equals 72.5k runecrafting xp per hour and 32k hunter xp per hour. I ended up with 1 extra imp and 3 extra books in the bank compared to what I started with and I also accidentally banked 4 Varlamor and Voice. So I think 73k runecrafting XP per hour is possible. You will usually end up with about 70 books when you are done, so the first 10 to 15 minutes of training doesn't really give any runecrafting XP, but that's not really a big deal if you plan on training with this method for many hours. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed watching my guide. I usually don't make skilling videos, but wanted to make an exception here as I thought this was a quite interesting method. I hope it was also interesting for you. Thank you for watching and have a good day.